Good morning, everyone. Welcome again. Wow, the week seemed to go by so quickly. It's been a tough week this past week for me because I put my fur baby down, Midas Touch. Oh, he was 15 years and 10 months, and he almost made it to 16. Um, his kidneys failed, and my husband and I had a rough time. We cried a lot, but we remember all the wonderful times we had with Midas running all over the place and doing different things. He's traveled on planes and gone on um, road trips. And he's just had a fabulous life, and I'm so thankful for him to be in my life. So I just thought I'll share that with you because that was a pivotal point in me. It's, I still can't believe he's gone, but... He was with me through so many wonderful periods in my life, getting married, buying a home, traveling all over the world even more. Oh, wow. And every time I came home, he was there with the waggy tail, ready to greet me and thankful that I was home again. So I am happy that he's um, running free and, and I know he's in good hands. So anyway, Welcome again. We had some rain last night. Wow, I know it's been tough around because of not a lot of rain, but St. George has got some one day, and today in Devonshire we got quite a downpour, and it's not quite tank rain when it doesn't rain long enough, but we give thanks for the nourishment and the showers of blessings that we receive, not just from rain, but from life experiences. There's so much going on in our world, but we still have to say thank you for all the good that has taken place in our world. Even if it's the smallest thing, see it as wonderful. We've been talking about prosperity, so that's the thing about looking at things not from a lack perspective, but from a prosperous perspective. So, almost to the end of the Ten Commandment Prosperity Series. We're on the Ninth Commandment. Wow, these ten weeks, well, nine weeks have gone quickly. And don't forget to, if you missed any of them, they're on Facebook and YouTube. And take a listen and catch up and take what you need from it to open your mind to prosperity consciousness. And here's just more tools to get us in the place that we want to and may all your dreams come true and know that the revealing word says prosperity is the consciousness that divine mind is inexhaustible support and supply god gives us everything we need all the time there is no time that god doesn't give us what we need we may think not sometimes when it doesn't look that good but if we take a breath and breathe we can look around and see and know the truth that we have been supported and we have what we need it may not what we want but it's what we need at that point in our lives so bless you as we go into our prayer today i found this daily word from 1955 that spoke to me and it talks about the presence and living in the presence and that was something i had to do when dealing with my fur baby crossing to the Rainbow Bridge. So let's take a deep breath in and join with me in prayer. Thank you, God, as we rise to meet each day, we are filled with your presence, Lord. Like light spreading across the sky, we let your light infuse our minds and all that we do today God fill us with thy presence let our homes be happy because we bring to them the presence of your love let our work be joyous because we bring to it the presence of your wisdom let our experiences be triumphant and living and triumphant in our life because we bring to them the presence of God's understanding. So thank you, God, as you continue to fill us with your presence. Wherever we are, we are one with God. Whatever we do, we do it knowing that God is with us. 
And we give thanks each day for all those blessings and the help and the love and the guidance that we receive as we turn to God first. As we open our eyes, we give thanks for a new day and a new beginning to remember the presence of God. So thank you, God, as you fill us with your presence and reveal to us each day all that is magnificent and wonderful in our lives and in our worlds. Let there be love and light and wisdom and guidance always. And that all that we desire is ours to receive because all is possible with God. We are filled with the presence right here, right now. As we bless the doctors and nurses and family members, co-workers and all people in need of prayer, we send healing blessings to you and joyful thoughts and positive thoughts to you to heal you through anything that you're going through. As we lift you up into the light of God, we give thanks for joined, sorry, for joined love and the presence of God that flows through each and every one of us. Bless those who continue to suffer from COVID and any other diseases um, that are out there and continue to ravage our world. Bless our world, God, and heal us from the constant violence that we hear of and bring more love and joy and peace and harmony into our world through those peaceful thoughts, joyful thoughts, and loving thoughts. We say thank you. Amen. Amen. Ah, sometimes when I'm doing the prayer, I just find things from reading and it's like, oh, what a wonderful thing to share. So I'm, I'm Hope you've got filled with the presence of God today and always. So today's daily word is entitled Holy. See, they always tie in. And we affirm today, I discover holiness everywhere and in everyone. Let's say that together. I discover holiness everywhere and in everyone. And he goes on to say, there are certain places I visit where the presence of God feels especially near. Places that feel holy. Hmm. These may include churches and other houses of worship, shrines, favorite places in nature. Any destination where I become vividly aware of the divine presence is holy ground. I remember these words from the Prayer of Protection by Unity, Unity poet James Dillard Freeman. Wherever I am, God is. Say that with me. Wherever I am, God is. That a divine presence I know lives within me. It is the true essence of my life and of every life. Today, my understanding expands. I discover the divine presence all around me and find holiness everywhere. Every person is a holy being. Every place is holy ground. Amen. And the verse today is taken from Genesis 28, verse 16. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. Surely the Lord is in this place. So the daily word tied into the prayer. And like I said, I read it with you every day. I wait to read it and ah, oh, the divine always works and connects everything together. So before we go into the ninth commandment, I'm going to play a song called The Answer. It's a lovely song by Eddie Watkins. What 
is our purpose? What is his will? How do we know what's true and what's real? We may not know is the answer and you know that ties in with the first co commandment that we've been speaking of all this time what is the first commandment put God first and when we put God first we know God is the answer and he guides us in every step of the way and that's what these com commandments are about and when we give them the uh, throwing the prosperity consciousness and using these commandments as tools we get a, a higher and uh, what's that word? A greater enlightenment of what the true meaning of these commandments will be for us in today's world, right here, right now. When we choose to take something that was written a long time ago and make it ours and own it and walk that path and know the truth that God is the answer. So these 10 commandments, as I've said in the older weeks, are our cardinal laws are the foundations for us to live our lives and to find that prosperity that we seek many times. We'll, or we all dream, we have imaginations and we want things in our lives and we don't know how to go about it. We'll use these tools, the Ten Commandments. We're giving these to you to move forward because Paul meant when he was talking about these Ten Commandments, they are the fulfilling of the law and we get to use them in our everyday life. In 2022, after all of these things that have transpired in the last couple of years that have changed our world, we get more tools. and They've always been there and we reinvent them to work for us now. So before I go into the ten, the last eight commandments remember the first four commandments are about right actions toward God how are you treating God and what are you doing with God and these last six are right actions towards humanity ethical and moral instruction so think about this when we do this because to gain prosperity we have to 
do it for to um, put God first go within to that presence be guided and then enrich ourselves and the world and that's how we stay prosperous that's something we've learned all along through these lessons so here are the metaphysical interpretations of the first eight commandments um, for prosperity one put God first two you shall make no mental images of lack three you shall not speak the word of lack or limitation. That's a really key one. Four, you shall let go and let God do it. Five, you shall deal honorably with God and with all human instruments through whom God's good is manifested for you. Six, you shall not take your wealth out of circulation. Seven, you shall not abase your wealth to idle or evil uses. Eight, you shall not seek something for nothing. Anybody remember all of those? Go back and listen to them and get, even if you just listen to the beginning and get the answer for it. And, and if it's something you need from it, take it from it, write it down, put it on your desk or on your refrigerator so you can remember to use it when you need to get through something and to what you desire. So the ninth commandment says from Exodus 20 verse 16, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Mm, remember, this is about out in the community. So metaphysically, we say and prosperous, thinking of it in a prosperous way, you shall not bear false witness against the source of your wealth. Against the source of your wealth. Bear false witness. What is this about? Anybody know what this is about? It's about truthfulness and your nature of truthfulness. Are you being honest about the source of your wealth? Are you bearing false witness against it? Oh, I'm, I'm poor. I don't have all these things. That, that, that's talking, not talking the right thing. We've already talked about that already. Don't speak words of lack of limitation. And this further tells you don't bear false witness against that source of wealth. It's not enough. Why? Well, I got $10. I really needed 20 No. You have enough right now. See it as prosperous and watch it expand. And, and if you don't believe that, think about the verse of Jesus having five fish and fed 5,000 people. We have that same consciousness to do all that God does and so much more. So take pride in never telling a deliberate lie. Never. Many of us think we're not lying. We find all ways to, to tell a story that's dishonest or is exaggerated or it has um, insinuation or gossip or all of those different ways. And we think, oh, we're not lying. We're not bearing false witness. We're talking about our neighbor badly, who's sick, and they would, it would just, you know, be negative. And that's the same thing when you're doing it to other things and other people, you're doing it to your wealth consciousness. So all the ones, those um, commandments before you have been leading up to this, and this is just a stronger one to remind you of what are you thinking, what are you speaking, and what are you doing? It's about lying, straight up lying. It says that which is diverse, adverse to God's will, therefore the great lie. If it is were adverse to God's good, sorry, it's a great lie. Jesus described the devil as the tempter, that which in consciousness tempts us to believe in false and asserted. That's what many of us are tempted to believe false things about how prosperous we are. And then we assert it by speaking false things or bearing false witness. All that we call evil is a mute testimony to the devil in our consciousness. And following that tempter, we accept the evidence of our senses and fail to stand fast on the truth of God's presence. 
we fail to stand fast on the truth of God's presence. That's what my prayer was about. The daily words about fill me with thy presence, God. So when we let that tempter come into our consciousness, we fail to stand fast in that truth and knowing about their presence. Therefore, we are disobeying that ninth commandment. Jesus instructed us not to resist evil, but to overcome it with good. Some of us want to stump things out. That's not how to do it. Overcoming it, feeding it with good all the time until it goes away. Trying to push it back, you know, and that's why many of us become depressed and various things that happen in our life because we're trying to make it not be there anymore. Are we giving false witness to it? Well, God's telling us to do things that overcome it. Smile when we don't want to smile. Say, I'm rich and wealthy, even though our pocket has 50 cents in it because you're still rich because you have 50 cents. Bring in the positive energy and, and, and the enlightenment of God and turning to God every step of the way brings forth the prosperity consciousness you want and then brings forth the material consciousness of prosperity that you want. Wow. Don't bear false witness. So when we accept lack of any good thing, we deny both God's omnipresence and his goodwill. Think about that. When we accept lack of any good thing, we deny both God's omnipresence and God's good will. So don't lie about what's going on in your life. Speak the truth. Affirm positive where you stand. Overcome the negativity in your life and find a way to move forward with a smile. And it's not easy all the time. I know when um, I dealt with Midas and I was watching him go down and I couldn't call the doctor. I had to get my husband to do it and he still cried and and I had to overcome. And, and what I did is I sat in my peaceful place on my porch and I smiled about all the wonderful things that I did with my dog and all the wonderful things he made me smile about. And this is the same way with prosperity things. Think about how what you can do with 50 cents oh yeah this world would tell you it's not enough to do anything but when you think good about that 50 cents watch it multiply so true or false let's answer these questions i am poor ah words no that's a lie that's one where you're lying these these words are just reinforcing to not bear false witness of what's truly yours to receive See the mistake, erase it, and try to get the right answer by going back to putting God first. The principle, God. God is that one source, the source of all your supply. That's a truth. Talking poverty is a false witness against God. Yeah, talked about that already. We should always follow Jesus' instructions. That's why we say first commandment, put God first. And interesting enough, I've read Matthew 6 before. It says, and make a secret transaction with God in which we accept gladly, praisefully, the particular gift or the demonstration that we are asking for at that moment. And remember what Matthew 6, 4 says, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Sometimes just go in and prayer. We don't have to say it out loud all the time. We just have to go into prayer and be filled with the presence. And in that place, we follow the guidance and the instructions that God gives us. And we receive what we desire. And another part about um, prosperity conscious, there must be a giver and a receiver. One who offers and one who accepts. God offers us eternal life and all its inherent perfection. We manifest as much or as little as we are willing to accept of God. So as the receiver of God's good, if you're not open enough, you're only going to get what you're open to. So by using different tools and different affirmations and different ways of opening your prosperity consciousness and your lifting your, your um, mind to receive more of what you desire, 
which is prosperity and goodness and great health and all that wonderful things in life. We have to expand our consciousness because God is filling us up, filling us up. But if we're just not quite sure, that's all we're going to get. So spread your heart wide and your mind wide to accept all that God has to give you. So our truth teaching today is from James 1 verse 5. If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly and it will be given to you. I'm going to say that again. This is our truth teaching. If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly and it will be given to you. It will be given to you. I found this quote. It says, poverty is a weapon of mass destruction. Think about it. If we're always thinking about how poor we are, we're destroying the life that we desire. We're not going to get to the, the home we want or the job we want or the family we want or the place we want to travel to because we th we're living in poverty consciousness. So shift it from mass destruction to great demonstrations where you have a prosperity consciousness and your weapon is prosperity and it grows and grows and grows in your consciousness. We must be true witnesses of God's abundance and not only for ourselves but for others. Remember, these are what this commandment's about including others in our prosperity consciousness. So we must be true witnesses of God's abundance, not only for ourselves, but for others. Refuse to recognize poverty, yeah? Refuse to recognize poverty. Remain balanced between the unseen and the seen and meet the appearances of lack on both the mental and material planes. It's looking at it for what it is, right here and now in the material and then thinking of it in the spiritual sense how we see it through the eyes of God and then you balance that out and you begin to see what is truly meant to see give where it will benefit and not where it contributes to weakness or laziness of the individual give you charities work to alleviate suffering like Mother Teresa. Do all those things that bring goodness in your life and to your community and to the world. And we will rid our world of all the violence that we hear all the time and all the things again and all the disease and the health. All of these things, when we put God first, we start there and we start opening our consciousness to receive good and only good. Yes, life holds us, steps us back sometimes, but those are lessons to learn. And if we look at them as lessons like, oh, no, no, no. Look at it like, oh, what am I supposed to learn of this? And step forward and keep doing it and widen that consciousness to receive all the blessings you are to receive. So here's a few questions for you. How do you establish prosperity with the Ninth, com ninth Commandments? Remember, the Ninth Commandment says, you shall not bear false witness against the source of your wealth. How do you establish prosperity? By using this commandment. And how should appearances of lack be treated? Ah. What are the answers? Always speak the truth. Claim only prosperity. Affirm right action. And do not deny God's presence and goodwill in your life. Simple. Yeah, they are simple when you think of it like that. But for us as humans, we tend to go, oh, and we make it a lot of work. So I want you to not bear false witness against the source of your wealth. Be prosperous. Be vigilant in your thoughts and your words and your actions. And know that God is the inexhaustible source of your supply. So let's take these words and thoughts into our meditation. So take a deep breath in and out. In and out. No, 
that you are filled with the presence of God right here, right now. The truth shall set you free. Know that which is true in spirit is true in God. To know the truth is to affirm the truth. I affirm the truth that there is only one presence and one power, God the good. Nothing can keep your good from you. Nothing can keep God's good from any of you. Breathe. Listen to the truth of your being. You are prosperous, always. Slowly open your eyes and come back to this place and to this time and give thanks and give thanks so our closing affirmation today is I acknowledge God as the source of all good and declare the truth of God's presence and power in all circumstances gratefully I'd say that again I acknowledge God as a source of all good and declare the truth of God's presence and power in all circumstances gratefully. Hey, amen. So let's say the closing prayer together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and we are richly blessed right now. Amen. Amen. And as you go off into the week, remember the answer. God is the answer. And I behold the Christ in you. Namaste.